Indian art, um, a lot of it often has to have a link to history. There always has to be a story, and a story that the community identifies with. Where I tend to deviate from the tradition and tend to, tend to bring in a more of a Western style, I do tend to try to bring in some element of um, sort of the personal, I try to bring in some romantic ideals as well. So I take the stories, but then I put them in a bit of a Western lens. So my, my focus is on um, the history of the Sikh people. And the most dynamic portion of that history was when the religion was at its very embryonic stage. So most of what I paint usually tends to deal with uh, people of, uh, you know, in medieval dress, swords, spears, shields, horses, things like that. I was approached by the Sikh Heritage Museum. They said, you know, we have a lot of artifacts. We have, uh, you know, so many photographs, postcards, things like that, showing Sikhs in, in the Great War. But we kind of want an image that will synthesize all of that. When I was first approached about the commission, I said, okay, I'm just gonna be drawing rifles instead of swords. You know, I didn't think that there would be such a great challenge. In truth, I re discovered very quickly that I wasn't really knowledgeable. Like, I knew when it started and I knew when it ended, and I sort of knew roughly the parties involved. But that doesn't really tell you the human story. That doesn't tell you about the participants beyond the very sort of uh, um, big person picture. Well, the first thing I learned was actually that uh, Sikhs were a big portion of the, uh, the British Army. So they were actually amongst the largest standing bodies of professional soldiers at the onset of the war. So they were actually highly prized as soldiers. But as I started reading accounts of the soldiers, their letters home, some of them were brutally tragic. The British Army would go from village to village in India, and the sign would literally read, you know, for, you know, an adventurous time in France, good pay, you know, you'll have a great time, risk of danger very low, just to, just to sell this notion that they were going on this adventure. And they got a lot of people, you know, a lot of young men volunteered based on just on that. Uh, and, uh, of course, the reality of it that they were plugged into was very, very dangerous and difficult and heartbreaking. When you read the accounts and you read the letters home, um, they're basically, you know, telling their relatives, don't expect to ever see me again. This place is a living hell. I will not, I will not make it alive. Everything changed as I started leafing through images, as I started just opening up that world, I wasn't sure exactly how to tell the story anymore. There was a turning point, and it was a postcard uh, that showed a painting of a Sikh at a military hospital. Um, and it kind of bridged the gap between, it showed this man in, with enormous dignity, with that aspect of the warrior, um, but it also showed him in a very human sense. I was really perplexed. I was trying different uh, approaches. And, and then I, my wife actually um, just sort of, I guess you tell my frustration, and then she had a breakthrough. Um, in my studio is my, my favorite painting. Um, one of my favorite paintings is always an inspiration to me. It's a painting by Rembrandt. So often it's labeled Man in Armor. It showed that quintessential soldier, you know? And somehow the, it was something as simple as the fact that this, the, the postcard I had um, the way he was looking, looking away, matched also the way this soldier is standing there holding his weapon. And that became a starting point. And she said, why don't you do something like that?
definitely the process of doing the painting and pro the process of engaging with somebody who is, um, you know, wanting to be a Canadian and wanting to, you know, live up to every, to, to the fullest, to serve this country, to love it to that extent, and to do it as a young man a hundred years ago, I think it really did kind of bring out the Canadianness in me. Because you sort of, sort of connect with, well, what did this young man who's really from such a faraway land and had no promise that he would be made a Canadian. He could have been sent home still afterwards. So, you know, the stakes were so much higher. The reward could have been taken away from him. Um, so in a way, it really makes you appreciate, you know, the situation you're in. And it also really makes you appreciate your Canadianness and engage with that.